Speaking of Canada goods, first thing that came to our mind is this: what on this green earth makes it so expensive? In today's video, we are going to analyze the business tricks which Canada Goose has employed to make us voluntarily donate our money to this notoriously expensive brand. Before we start, let's look at the name Canada. I believe that the general impression of Canada will be like, "Uh huh, I love Canada, the good old neighbor of the United States." However, let's be honest: most people don't even know which city is the capital of Canada, and the Goose, unlike Canada. Are popular among professional and amateur self-entitled hunters, as well as meat lovers. I mean, come on, who doesn't like a good old liver sandwich? Goose are delicious. However, Canada goose are inedible, and what makes it so expensive, anyways? The answer is, of course, marketing. Canada goose was founded by Samtech in 1957. At first, it was named Mature Sportswear. At that time, their marketing positioning was winter clothing. In 1972, Tech's son-in-law David Reese joined the company. David changed the main product line to down jacket and winter breaker parkas, and renamed the company to Snow Goose. At that time, the company main customer groups were Canadian government departments such as the Ontario Provincial Police and the Arctic Research Programs. The practice of collaborating with fields with special needs has established the Canada Goose professional image. In the 1980s, Snow Goose expanded the market to Europe under the leadership of David Rees. However, the name of Snow Goose had already been registered in Europe. David Rees has no choice but to change the brand name to Canada Goose. Even though Canada Goose entered the European market, their main target customer was still limited to scientific research teams and governments. However, they only order their products seasonally, which basically means that Canada Goose were not generating sales every day. So, what kind of strategy should Canada Goose take to boost the sales? Well, it was Danny Reyes, son of David, and the future owner of Canada Goose, who found the answer when travel to Europe. He found out that there was ordinary working class people and women wearing Canada Goose on the streets, even in the airport duty free shops. Canada Goose products were hung along with luxury fashion brands such as LV, Gucci, and Prada. Then he even realized that the Canadian local brand, which Canadians themselves didn't even pay much attention to, was actually receiving great likings in the European market. Then he even decided to seize this opportunity to carry forward the Canada Goose brand and make it a pioneer in the winter parka market. After Danny took over the family business, the first decision he made was to change the positioning of Canada Goose from a professional brand that is dedicated to the scientific research teams to a fashion-style down jacket brand. And the second significant decision he made was to break into the general consumer market. The one great advantage Canada Goose had was that the brand had already received positive market sentiment in Europe. Europeans had always regarded Canada as an extreme cold and wild place. When they saw the name of the cold had the word Canada in it, it was easy to connect them to the sense of Canada's ice and snow. This preconceived impression makes them think that the down jacket produced in Canada must be really warm. Until today, Canada Goose still remains its authenticity and insists manufacturing in Canada only. Although changing the company name to Canada Goose was the right decision, if Danny wants to bring Canada Goose to the fashion industry and enter the ordinary consumer market, there is still something missing. That is, women's collection. The Canada Goose previous clothing production line only focused on men's clothing. Even if it has been a cold-proof clothing for more than 30 years, it has never thought about relying on women's clothing. It is really a complete irony now. However, after Danny saw women on the European streets who would rather buy men's style and wear Canada Goose, he realized the potential of female consumers. It is quite difficult for Canada Goose to increase the sense of fashion at first, because from the very beginning, Canada Goose only focused on professional field. As a partner of the scientific research teams, Canada Goose co-design must take into account the needs of the survival in extreme weather, and the products are generally made in red or other bright colors. The research team even nicknamed it as the Big Red. Therefore, in order to increase the sense of fashion for the brand, they redesigned the cuttings and added more color collections such as black and some other darker colors. After changing its positioning and increasing the sense of fashion design, the next thing is the real highlight—that is, marketing. 
However, marketing means investing money frantically. Nevertheless, at that time, the annual revenue of Canada Goose was only three million Canadian dollars, which was far from enough. Therefore, Danny decided to go slant and adopt two new marketing practices. First is to adopt the word of mouth marketing strategy. The second is to increase their exposures in the fashion shows so that high-end buyers will notice their brand and discover the value of Canada Goose. At that time, social media has not adopted the concept of influencers. Smartly enough, Canada Goose decided to cooperate with film crews and support film industry in Hollywood. When it comes to cooperating with Hollywood, the best way is to wrap up the actors from head to toe with Canada Goose products and directly expose the brand itself in front of the camera. However, how much sponsorship fee would Canada Goose have to invest for those movie stars to wear Canada Goose in front of the camera? Then he did the math and then came up with another idea, which is to voluntarily sponsor the film crews who would go out and film the scenes in extreme cold weather. Surprisingly, this method actually works. For example, the producer of Kill Your Darling once talked in an interview about his collaboration with Canada Goose. When she found out that her crew were all freezing in that icy and snowy place, she called Canada Goose, asking if they could get a few winter parkas from them. It was almost immediately Canada Goose sent more than enough down jacket to every crew member. Such a situation happened to be recorded by the paparazzi. Photos of Danny Radcliffe and Elizabeth Olsen wearing Canada Goose went viral on the internet, and they became informal endorsers for Canada Goose. Canada Goose was practically famous overnight. In addition to film crews, Canada Goose has also sponsored film festivals, including the Toronto Film Festivals and Sundance Film Festival. The film Kill Your Darling, which we just mentioned, was also nominated at the 2013 Sundance Film Festival. Coincidentally, starting from 2013, Canada Goose has been sponsoring Sundance Film Festival ever since. Mmm, smells fishy. Whichever case it was, 2013 was actually a good year for Canada Goose. American model Kate Upton appeared on the cover of a magazine wearing a pure white Canada Goose parka behind the sexy American sweetheart with the snow-capped mountains. The sexy, healthy, and contrasting images strongly captured the reader's heart. After appearing on the magazine covers, the next thing they know is their sales skyrocketed and now they become famous in the North American market. As mentioned earlier, in addition to being dependent on the public attention brought by the celebrities, Canada Goose also laid its eyes on the fashion shows. Now that Canada Goose wants to transfer into a luxury brand, they must participate in the fashion shows just like their predecessor, Montclair, which is a frequent visitor to the fashion shows. Montclair is a French brand, headquartered in Italy. After it transferred itself into a luxury brand, it started the whole fashion show business. The idea of making luxury down jacket is unprecedented, but Montclair have done it successfully. As a later generation, Canada Goose naturally followed Montclair's path and started appearing in the fashion show, which successfully caught many high-end buyers' attention. By combining two marketing practices, Canada Goose has finally transferred its marketing positioning from a native North America brand to a fashionable high-end luxury brand. From then on, when people talk about Canada's national treasures, in addition to the lovely beaver, sweet maple syrup, and the beautiful maple leaves, there was also a brand called Canada Goose. Thank you.